Before we actually start drawing the ant, I'd like to show you a picture. This is an SEM scanning electron micrograph image of a real ant. So it's kind of like a photograph. We'll be drawing the head first. So here's the ant's head, and there's the eye. It's got a compound eye made of little tiny lenses. It's also got some eye spots up here. The antennae, we'll look at the ball joint in a minute, the mandible. These are called palps. It's a very skinny little neck. And then the thorax begins here in the legs. So that gives you an idea of what the head is going to look like. You need to find these guidelines for the neck right here. There's two little lines. That's going to be our skinny little neck. And I'm going to zoom in on them a little bit. Although I think I'll draw the guideline circle first so that you can see about how large it is. You want to stay away from this line down here. You want to make a circle right about here. and You're going to turn the circle into an egg shape. Now it should be about the size of a real egg. You know how big an egg is. So when you draw your circle, you should be able to put like three fingers across it. It's about how big. And if you draw very, very lightly at first, then it's easy to erase because you don't always get your lines perfect the first time. So make them very, very light. And then there's my circle. And then I'm going to come down and kind of make it into an oval like this, an egg shape. Like that. And then I don't need this line anymore in here. I've made it like an egg shape. I'll zoom in a little bit now. So now I can erase this. I don't need this anymore. Now I'm going to make another guideline after I draw the eye guideline. So the eye is going to be about in the middle. Now some ant species, it's a little higher, a little lower, a little bigger, a little smaller. This is just a basic generic ant. It's not a particular species. So if we kind of make it a middle-sized eye, put it right in the middle, it's about right. Make some guidelines right about there. And then draw a smaller circle right here, kind of halfway between the eye and the edge. Right there. And then make a line going kind of up like this. It kind of it curves a little bit, but it's fairly straight like that. Make it light. And then a line over like this, kind of curving over the top a little bit like that. Make it very light. So those are the guidelines you need. Now we can darken them a little bit as we draw. Let's draw the eye first. Let's go around the eye. Darken it in. Kind of erase your little guidelines a little bit. And let me show you the close-up of the eye. Here's one. Can you see how it's made of lots of little tiny dots? Each one of those is a little lens. And here's another picture. This one has less of them, but you can really see a lot better. They almost look like hexagons, like a honeycomb. And each one of these is a lens. So you can think, what is the ant seeing? We have one lens in our eye, and the ant's got lots of them. So if an ant looked at a flower, it's going to see a flower in each lens. We look at a flower, we see one flower because we have one lens. The ant's going to see a little flower image in each one of these. Now that's really confusing if you looked out at the world and you saw a hundred or five hundred of everything. But the ant's not worried about actually seeing the object in the way that we are. What the ant needs to see is motion because motion can indicate danger. Uh, now a bird is going to come and pick up the ant and eat it. It needs to be very sensitive to motion. And so this system of having a compound eye is very, very good at detecting motion. Now while we're at it, let's go and look at this. This is the base of the antennae. And there's a little ball that fits into a socket. And I'll show you on the other picture too. You can see on this one, you see how there's a ball right here? 
and it fits into a socket. We have a couple of joints like this. Our shoulder joint and our hip joint are like this. It actually looks like a ball on the end of our bones and it fits right into here. Now, of course, the ant doesn't have bones. It's got this tough exoskeleton, but it has this same arrangement that we have in our hip and shoulder with a ball that fits into a socket. And that's important so that, I'll try to demonstrate here with my pencil, the antenna can move in any direction like this. See, the ball can swivel around. And this is not like our elbow or our knee, which can only flex in one direction. But the ball and socket lets it hinge around in any direction. So that'll be the next thing we draw. Let's finish the eye. Now instead of drawing a whole bunch of tiny circles in there, my suggestion is to just draw kind of like a, a checkerboard. Draw some lines this way and back and forth. And this will make it look like a compound lens. And you can shade a little bit at the bottom if you want to make it look round. Now really it would be rather dark. It's going to be kind of dark black, but we're going to keep our drawing light so we can see all the parts. Okay, so there's our compound eye. Now I think we'll go back and we'll label everything when we're done drawing, and then you can find good places to stick the labels, because if I write a label in right now, maybe we'll need to draw on top of it later. So we're going to wait on the labeling. All right, so let's make the antennae. There's the ball. You can, If you want to make like a little C shape or something at the bottom for the socket, you can do that. And then a little ball sits in there like that. And then for this, we, you can either you can use the guideline as one of your lines, or you can draw a line on either side of it. The guideline can be kind of like the middle, and you can draw on either side of it, or you can use it as one of the sides. It doesn't matter. We're trying to make this... Now, that thick. It's pretty thin. And then there's like a little joint here. I don't know what kind of joint that is. I'm not really sure. And then we're going to go around here. Now at the tip of the antennae, make it a little bit thicker. Shape balls kind of reminds me of one of those ear swabs, this Q-tip sort of. It's a little bit thicker. Now not all ants have this, but a lot do. Go ahead and put it in. And if you shade a little bit, it'll look around. Now we're going to make some segments. This is segmented, and I counted segments in a lot of pictures, even a couple of real insects, and I always counted 10 lines, which would make 11 segments. Every one that I counted turned out the same. So leave this kind of club area. Um, don't put any lines in there. Come to here. and just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, in some ant species, this might be a lot longer, or shorter. This is just kind of a very average ant. And you're going to find lots of uh, variations. It depends on what they need in their environment. All right, so let's um, draw in the edge of the head like this. Go ahead and make it dark. Stop kind of right there. I'll draw the mandible in in a minute. And let's do the other little eye spots up here. Now, if you were looking straight head on at the end, not on the side, we're kind of looking at side view, but if you're looking straight at it, you would see eye spots like this. So we're going to see this one and kind of half of this one, because we're looking this way. So we're going to see a little spot here, and kind of a little tiny one peeking there. And then let's draw the mandibles. 
And let's look at a couple pictures first. Let's look at this one again. There's a very typical mandible. This one kind of curving out here. You see that's got little, looks kind of pointy. It has some things on the end. Here's the mandibles all tucked in and it's not using them right now. And you can see they have a little jagged edge. It's kind of got like a big tooth at the bottom. Kind of hairy too. And here's another. Now in this picture you can really see the palps sticking out. It's got these two like jaw-like things called a mandible. Now you can call them jaw, but the ant uses the mandibles more like we use our hands. If the ant wants to carry something, some of them, you know, that's how they carry their eggs. If you disturb their nest, they pick up their eggs and move them. They use their mandible. Some ants carry drops of dew, little water drops they can hold, or anything. Anything it wants to carry, it holds in the, in the mandible. So it uses them like a hand, although the word mandible means jaw. Now when it really wants to put something into its mouth, it has these little like fingers to help it, called palps. So it's got a small inner set and this set coming down here. Now, there's a lot of variation in the sizes and shapes of mandibles. Some ants have very long mandibles, a little like sawtooths on the edge. They can cut leaves. Some of them have very short ones. We just looked at some short ones. So whatever shape and size your mandibles are, it'll probably be just fine. It don't have to look just like mine. So you could also decide if you want to put one like this, or you can you can put both of them. If you want to see both of them, you could put one like coming here and here. Some students like to do that, but they see both of them. That's okay. I think I'll make mine um, just more closed in here. So I kind of make a little line going up like that. And then I'll just make mine kind of look like that. Put little, little finger things on the end there. And then maybe I'll put the other one kind of peeking out over the other side a little bit. I'll kind of shade it. Shade this one a little bit. And while we're at it, we can shade the head. Now the trick with shading is to make the transition between dark and light very, very gradual. You don't want a stripe. See right there? That looks like a black stripe, doesn't it? Alright, so that doesn't look it doesn't make the head look round. Now watch what happens when I very, very gradually make it get lighter and lighter, very slowly get lighter. So that's the trick to shading. Make those transitions very, very gradual. Another trick you can use is your finger. That can help smooth out the little imperfections in your shading. If you're using a very soft drawing pencil, sometimes you can just go like that. Okay, the last thing we need to add is some hairs. Ants are hairy. And we did see some hairs. I didn't point them out, but you can look at this picture again. Look at that. Hairs, hairs everywhere. And so you can see the hairs on its head here. It's got hairs on its body. This ant has very small hairs. Some of them are much larger. So we're going to make ours kind of a little bit on the large side so we can see them. So here you could make some little tiny ones if you wanted to on the antennae. There were some on the mandible too, weren't there? And of course, the whole point of having these little hairs isn't so that the ant can have a hairstyle or wear barrettes or anything. These are sensory hairs that it needs in order to find out what's going on around it. Because you remember, the ant lives in a hard shell. It's kind of like, you know, the, back in the Middle Ages, the knights, you know, would wear those complete metal suits of armor. And if you were to go over a knight and, like, touch the armor, if, like, a fly landed on it, the knight wouldn't know anything. 
he was completely in a suit of armor. So it's kind of like the ant is wearing a tough suit of armor. And the problem with that is that you're not real sensitive to what's going on around you. So the ant's got these little hairs, and if something brushes up against the hairs, then the hairs will send a signal to the brain, letting the brain know that something is touching it. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit again. Because we're going to go to the opposite side of the drawing. We're not going to do this yet. We're going to wait and do the thorax last. We're going to go over here and draw this end. So you need to find this line. It should be very easy. I'm going to zoom in on that one. And that is going to be the waist. The ants have a very skinny waist. So you see this little line coming up there in the middle? Draw a very light U, a little guideline right above it, like that. And then we're going to make those, that into humps. It's going to be like a two hump camel. Just imagine this as being some camel humps. One like that. This one looks like it's a little smaller than that one. There we go. These are called nodes. And the waist is called the petiole or petiole. We'll label that in a few minutes. And if you want to shade a little bit, you can. And of course there would be hairs. There's hairs everywhere. Little hairs. So if something touches the ant's waist, you can feel it. Now I'm going to zoom back out a little bit again, so you can see where we're going here. We're going to draw the abdomen over here, and you need to find a little dot right here. That's going to be the point at the end of the abdomen. The abdomen is going to come around like this and end right here. So if the ant has a stinger, it would be right there. So we're going to start out drawing a circle, and we're going to make this a little bit larger than our head circle. The abdomen is a little bit larger, and this thing is going to be called the gaster. Make a nice large, so this one should be maybe like four fingers wide. And then we're going to bring the top down here. And it's going to end, actually I'm going to make it, this is why we make light lines, because then you can change your mind. I'm going to make it even come out a little bit more here. Nice, down here, and down to that point. Like that. And then this one under here. Now you can just bring it straight over, but if you want to be a little bit artistic about it, Come in just a little bit and out. We can a smooth curve like that. Now the gaster has segments also. It's got one at the bottom. So we'll draw these curvy lines like this. Now the curve is going to help this area really look round. One, two, three. See how that helps it look nice and round. Now if you really want to be highly detailed about it, you can go right here. You can make it look like this is sort of overlapping a little bit. Again, kind of like it's armor overlapping. You don't have to do this, so just a silly little trim detail. If you want to kind of go like that, like that, there. And if you want to shade a little bit, if you love to shade, you can shade a little bit like that. You definitely want to shade down here, like this. But actually, you might wait a 
until we put in the don't spend too much time here until we put the leg in. I'm gonna have a leg that's coming across here. So we put some basic shading in. Now, if it has a stinger, the stinger is gonna be down at that tippy end. So most ants do have, I think, the ability to sting. Ants belong to the group called Hymenoptera, which includes the bees and wasps. And as a general rule, they all have stingers. Now, not all ants are known for stinging, though. So you can give your ant a stinger if you want to. You can kind of like flatten the end off and then go like that. Give it a little stinger if you want to. Or if you want your ant to be nice and not sting, you can don't have to put it on. Now we're going to slide back and we're going to fill in the thorax. This is the hardest part of the drawing, so hang in there. The legs aren't actually going to be all that difficult. Thorax is the hardest. So we're going to be connecting the neck here to the waist. So what we want to do is, probably what you do is like watch me do it and then you try it. We're aiming for, actually it'd be good, see this end here? Why don't you put a little J right here at the end? Put a little J like this. Like that, okay? That'll be a big help. And then we'll come up here a little bit, like this. Now we're going to connect this the top line we're going to come over like this and down this is where we're going to connect to it's kind of going to have like two humps it's like a, a bigger hump draw lightly a bigger hump like this and then make this into a smaller hump like that there there looks like a Now this piece we can actually come down, you know, right between our two humps there. Bring it down like this and connect it to our J. And if you think you made your J too long or too short, you can adjust it. And bring one down a little bit. Like that. And then this line we're going to do two scoops like one two so the bottom here is going to look like a scoop 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 we already drew the bottom scoop like that so this one you're going to make it a kind of a nice curvy line like that not too low and like this this may be the hardest line in the whole drawing right here we'll get through it Okay, there and there. If yours doesn't look identical to that one, don't worry about it. There's a lot of variation in ants. There's one kind of ant where the thorax looks all spiky because the ant's camouflage is it kind of looks like a, a thorn bush. It looks like a little plant, piece of plant actually. And so it's got a very oddly shaped thing. These things are real big and it's just got these little spikes everywhere. So sure yours will be just fine. All right, and then right here, let's bring this up over like this. Because the, the thorax actually has these three segments, and guess what? There's a leg that comes off each one. So one, two, three. Of course, there'll be a leg coming off left and right on this one. So this piece has two legs, that piece has two legs, and that piece will have two legs. Okay, another little trim detail you want, if you want to add in your thorax, some have this and some don't, depends. Some ants have little spikes that come off right here. It's up to you. If you want your ant to be smooth, you can keep it smooth. You can make it a little spiky. 
And a really important thing about the thorax is not only that's where the legs come off of, it's also where the breathing holes are. So let's add a breathing hole here. It's called a spiracle. Add one here and put one up here. And here's a close-up picture of what these spiracles look like. They actually look like kind of like a little valve with a slit, and I think they can open and close this a little bit. So if maybe if they get into water, they fall into water, they'd want to shut the spiracle so water doesn't get in. That's a super close-up view. But for our purposes, a little circle will be just fine. Then one last thing you might want to add, there's a little thing that sits here, there's a little gland. We could just make it like a circle. It's hard to find a really close-up picture. But it's called the metapleural gland, and it makes a chemical that is antibiotic. And that means that it kills bacteria and maybe even some funguses, which is very important because the ant can't go to the doctor. right? So it makes its own little antibiotic to help it not get sick from bacterial infections. It can distribute this chemical in other parts of its body and kind of rub it around and stay germ-free. So let's shade the thorax a little bit. These segments really do kind of remind me of armor, of the whole ant body. These actually sort of remind me of the armor that the knights used to wear. Maybe it's like arm or something. Be very patient with your shading. And then also hairs, hairs everywhere. And now we're ready to add the legs. Each part of the thorax is going to have a leg. And our first guideline is going to be an oval below each of these segments. Get really, really light. See how my ovals are kind of leaning a little bit in this direction. They're not straight up and down. They should all be about the same size. The legs are really about the same size. They're all pretty much pretty much the same. And then our the, the next part of the leg is going to come off the end of these. This is kind of like uh, equivalent of our hip. And then our leg bones are going to come off of there. like that. Okay, we're going to start with the front leg. So you see this little, little line here? That's going to be the segment at the end of this, right, like this. We're going to go from here to here. And that's going to be actually represent the knee. What we're going to draw is kind of like the thigh bone. Now it's a little bit in perspective, so it's going to be a little bit short, but we're going to Start right about here. And draw a guideline up and over like this. Like that. And these, these things are kind of actually a little bit thick. They're not super skinny right there. They get skinny down towards the end. 
They're actually reasonably thick. Okay, now to make it really, really exactly right, at this end right here, make like a backwards letter C. A little bit from the end like this. And then this end here like that, that's a piece. And then coming out of here, this piece like that. And then behind here we can kind of go like that. And we can add a shade. Actually, this piece comes out from under here. It'll probably be a little bit dark under there too. Reduce my guidelines. There we go. Make this a little bit round looking, shade just a little bit. And we can add some hairs. And add some hairs too. This that piece up here is called the coxa. And this is called the femur. What we've just drawn here. It's called the femur. And you have a femur, that's your thigh bone. Of course, the ant doesn't have bones, so we're calling this piece the femur, but it's kind of in the same arrangement in the body, so we call it a femur. Okay, so the next piece comes off of here. It'll start out kind of skinny. Oddly enough, it gets a little bit thicker down to here. Super thick, but kind of like that. Now, if this is the thigh and that's the knee, this would be the bone, like our tibia bone. This would be the ankle down here. So this would be like our shin bone. And in fact, we do call it the tibia, just like in the human body. I just looked over at my desk and saw this picture I want to show you. This is what we just drew. This is that first segment. This is the coxa where we drew that oval. This thing is called the trochanter. So this is that thing right there. We put that in. And then this is the femur. So I just showed you this right here. Okay, so that's the tibia. So we're down to what would be the ant's ankle. Move it up a little bit. And now you need to find there's a dot down here. It can kind of give you a guideline of where you're headed to. And that'll be the very tippy end. And they have a little claw at the end. So we're going to make kind of a guideline that goes like this. This is where you're headed. Like that. So in this space, you have to get in a long foot bone, perhaps to here, about this long, something like that. And then you're going to get one, two, three, four little segments. And number five is going to be the claw or claws at the end. So we have femur, tibia, that would be the equivalent of the ankle. And so this next bone is sort of like the bones in your feet, the long bones go from your ankle to your toes and then these would be like your toe bones and you have five toe bones you have like four little ones and a big toe or you could think of it as fingers you got four fingers and a thumb so the ant though instead of having the toes side by side it has them all lined up end to end one two three four and instead of a thumb it has a claw okay so we'll draw this one like that and they actually kind of start skinny and get a little bit larger oddly enough and then here it's going to start it's going to start thinner so like a super close-up of this would be kind of like this to oversimplify it kind of like that basically right 
And I'll zoom in a little bit. Now I'm going to get one, two, three, four, and then a claw. Now I'm going to show you some pictures of claws. You can do a number of things. You can make just one, or you can make two. I'll show you. It's actually very complicated. Let me zoom out a little bit. There is an insect foot. I'm not sure if that's an ant. I think so. So this one has these two big claws. And in here, the space in between the claws, it's real complicated. It looks like it has a beard and some hairs going out there. So it has some sensory hairs. Very, very complicated for such a small part. I have a picture of one that's a lot more simple than that. I don't think this is an ant. I think it's some other, but this is an insect that really needs to stick on to something. I don't know, plants or clothing or something. Much simpler arrangement. And here's another close-up. This one has the two claws. It has a little pad thing there. So you can see there's a lot of variation in what the end looks like. And I believe I read that some of them really only have one. So whatever you want to make for your claw, it's going to be good. I mean, line like that. And then all along here, you're going to have these sensory hairs. Sensory hairs everywhere. So again, this is the femur, this is like the thigh, this is like the knee, this is like the tibia, this is like the ankle, this is like the foot bone, toe, 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 claw. So now you know how to draw a leg. You know what we're going to do over here. Each one of these is going to have those parts. However, they're going to be shaped a little bit differently. We're going to make this one go down like this. I need to zoom out again, I think show you where we're headed with these. Okay, so this one usually goes up. This one can also go up, but we kind of made it, it's like sticking out at us a little bit. But this one we're going to make going up, because oftentimes they really do. So our guideline is going to be up like this, and it's okay to go right into the gaster. When you overlap in drawings, it makes them look more real. If I tried to stay away from this, then it wouldn't look real. So we're going to go ahead, don't worry about it, we're going to go right into the gaster, like that. And then we're going to come down here, and there's a little tiny dot right down here. It shows where you're headed. And you can kind of sketch a real light guideline to show where you're going with this. Helps you stay on track, like that. And then this one, I'm going to bring mine, you can bring it like up here. If you want to, you can make it go down here. My original drawing, I had it going up here like this. And it's okay to overlap. And then there's a little dot down here that you can use. So if you want to make the joint right in the middle of this space here, make really, really light. Keep your guidelines super light because you're going to want to race. Just kind of go like that. So this leg is actually going to be the one out in front. It's going to be in front of this leg, and this leg's going to be in front of this. So let's do this leg first, because it's out in front. Now again, you're going to go like this. And then at the end here, let's see, let's um, draw it out like this. This is going to be our little joint here. Right over it. It's okay. You can go right over your guideline. It's all right. Doesn't matter. So I think I need to make that a little bit thicker. That, make it plenty thick. This is the femur. It's a pretty big, thick part. zoom in for you. And then 
I'm going to go ahead and put that trochanter on. I'm going to draw a letter C. This time it's going to look like a correct way. Letter C, like that. And then draw a line back like this, and back like this, and another little C. That's that little cup shaped thing that comes off the coxa. And again here it kind of it starts out small and gets bigger and you want to make it go here's your whole leg down here. You want to make this it's pretty long. You want to make it like down to here. Make this make this at least as long as this part, if not a little bit longer. Make it get a little bit wider out here. They actually have, you know, a nice kind of curve to their legs. They're not just straight. They have nice kind of wavy shapes. And then in this remaining space, we need that long segment and then four short ones. So, long. And then one, two, three, four. And then your claw at the end, whatever you're making the claw look like. Some hairs on the coxa. Put some hairs on the femur. Now, sometimes it's easier if you kind of ignore this in your mind. Kind of ignore this for a minute. And just imagine you're drawing the leg. Imagine it's not there, and just kind of go guidelines right over it. You can erase those in just a second here. That. Scoop up and over like that. Now you see I've drawn right into the gaster. Now I'm going to just erase part of the gaster that's inside there. And then this one's on top so I'll just erase that. Now it looks like it's going on top of the gaster. Again, we'll make a letter C. Like that. So this is kind of like a cup shape thing. It's like the femur is stuck into a cup. Like that. Coxa sticking out behind there. I'm just going to shade that in kind of dark behind there. So it looks like this is really standing out. You can always draw some lines on top like that. Put some lines or some little hairs on your femur. Okay, and then just this last segment. Now you know the routine already, don't you? We're up to the knee part. This is like the thigh, and then we're down to this. So draw exactly what we drew here. Draw that here. Same thing. And then erase. See how I went over the gaster? Just erase inside like that. 
that's the nice thing about working in pencil. Now, if you're working in pen, that wouldn't work so well. Can erase that. If you're working in pen, you would have to do a pencil drawing like this first, and then have it all planned out so you know where not to draw. Okay, and then down here you have that long foot bone thing, the tarsus. And then one, two, three, four. So I almost didn't get down to my dot. So maybe I'll make this a little bit longer. One, two, three, four. And then the claw. Actually, we need to add some hairs to the gaster too, don't we? The gaster has hairs as well. I'm making my hairs kind of all come out from the same direction, like this way. So if you would like pet the ant, the hairs would all kind of smooth down like that. Imagine that they're going the same direction. Now we need to label all the parts. The first three parts we're going to do are the head, thorax, and abdomen. And for this, I think I'm going to make a line to show you like everything past this point is the head, between here and here is the thorax, and this is the abdomen. So we want to make a line right about where the neck is, straight up like this. And then we need to make a line right at the end here. So the waist doesn't count. The waist is going to be part of the abdomen. So I'm going to go up right here. And then everything between these two lines is the thorax. And I'm just going to make an arrow like that. And then I'm going to write this in big letters. Thor axe. And then everything from here down, the waist, the petiole, and the gaster, is the abdomen. So everything on this side of the line down is ab, do, men. And everything on this side of the line, like this, is the head. Some of the parts of the head are the antenna, A N T, starts with the word ant, doesn't it? E N N A. So it's one antenna, two antennae. If I added a letter E, that would make it plural for two. But this is just one, so we'll say antenna. And these little eye spots here, they're called the ocelli. O C-E-L-L-I. And that's plural because there's three of them. And if you want to remember, you could put three. Three ocelli. And those are the little eye spots that just see light and dark. The eye that actually sees is this one. This is the compound eye. And I think I'll maybe try to write it here. This. I'll come down here and write. Com compound eye. Compound just means it has a lot of parts. And let's point out here 
Remember we talked about this, that this is a ball joint. And this is the mandible. And actually, we didn't put in the little palps. If you want to add a little wiggly thing, one, two, like that. It's like little fingers sticking out. These are the palps. Well, let's label that mandible. Man, D-I-B-L-E. It's an I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-I-B-
if you if you've made your ant able to sting, you could label that stinger. And I think that's all the parts we're going to label. I will leave you with a view of it. If you want to pause the video and catch up, you can.